What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony and today I am excited. We are in an all new vehicle from Hyundai called the Hyundai Venue, courtesy of Jack G and Bobo Hyundai in York, PA. And like I said, this is pretty exciting. I always like testing out new vehicles and this is I think, in my opinion, kind of comparable to the Kia Soul. And this particular vehicle is essentially gonna slot in just underneath of the Kona. And again, compete with vehicles like the Kia Soul, like the Ford Echo Sport, like Nissan Kicks. So what do you say? Let's go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so, but as you can probably imagine, there are a few different trim levels for the 2020 venue. First one being the SE, starting at $18,345. SEL for $20,245. And lastly, the denim starting at $23,045. And there are a few different package options available for those trim levels on the venue as well. And I'll briefly touch on them as we go on in the video, of course. But regardless of trim level, the power plant on the venue will be the same. Powering this little beast is going to be a 1.6 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder engine, putting out 121 horsepower, 113 pound feet of torque. And that power is going to be sent to the front wheels through a six-speed manual that comes standard for the SE. However, we'll say we do have the SE trim level today, but with an IVT, or essentially Hyundai's version of a CVT. And that is an option that'll bump this particular vehicle up to $19,680. But either way, again, six-speed manual or a CVT transmission giving you MPG numbers coming in at 30 in the city, 35 on the highway for the six-speed, 32 city, 34 highway for the CVT. But before we do any kind of acceleration, I always try to mention the drive modes first. There are no drive modes available on the SE, but I did want to mention there is a snow mode that will come with the SEL trim level. So definitely a cool little feature here, especially if you're in Pennsylvania, that's something that you're gonna appreciate. But pulling up to a red light now, let's go ahead and get ready. Let's do a quick little acceleration here and let's see how quickly we can get this new 2020 Hyundai venue here up to speed. And here we go. <laughs> little bit of traction issues there. Actually not too bad of an acceleration from being honest. It's a uh, pretty much as expected for the Hyundai venue. It's a four cylinder with power being set to the front wheel. So we did lose a little bit of traction there, but then again, it's probably in the twenties today here in Pennsylvania, kind of cold, but actually not too bad of an acceleration. Kind of surprised me there if I'm being honest, but to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important and braking setup on the venue is actually gonna differ ever so slightly between the trim levels. For instance, for the SE trim level that we have today, you will find front disc rear drum brakes. However, if you were to go with the SEL trim level or the denim, of course, you will find four wheel disc brakes. So a little better stopping power there, but even with the front disc rear drums, really no issues with the braking feel. It certainly brings you to a nice stop in the venue. It's one of those things where if this were a bigger vehicle, maybe you would have some issues there, but with it being a smaller SUV, probably not gonna have any issues with the braking feel anyway, so. Then touching on suspension and handling a little bit, up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension in the back, a twist beam rear axle. And as far as ride quality goes, it's probably one of the first things I muttered to myself when I first started getting on the road in the venue is it's really not that bad of a ride quality considering the size of the venue. It's actually less than 100 inches, but usually when you get smaller vehicles like that, the ride quality is kind of the sacrifice, but really with the venue, it's been just fine. Really no issues with the ride quality. So well done Hyundai for that. As far as the steering feel goes, this lane keep assist is just, it's an amazing system. I can let go of the steering wheel, literally, and it will keep me centered in the lane. It's kind of funny, but steering feel is just fine once you kind of get used to that lane keep assist system, knowing what's best for you a little bit. You, of course, could turn that off if it annoys you too much, but it is kind of a cool system, especially when it comes to safety features. But nonetheless, cabin noise has been quite nice as well. Certainly pretty quiet in here. I still think the most surprising thing about the suspension and handling is the ride quality again, but but touching on visibility a little bit, I can see perfectly fine out the back. Typically with boxier vehicles, you aren't gonna have any issues with visibility, so no issues there for me. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this all new 2020 Hyundai venue. 
All right, you guys, here it is, the 2020 Hyundai Venue. First thing I wanted to mention on the exterior is there are two-tone color options available, like its older brother, the Hyundai Kona. So that is pretty interesting. For instance, the denim trim level, that one is actually gonna give you a denim color exterior with a white roof and also a denim color cloth interior. So that is a pretty cool color for the inside. So that's maybe one of the reasons you should consider that one. But either way, let's go ahead and make our way to the front. Up front, you will find projector style front headlights. And they will, of course, come with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out they're going to turn on automatically for you there premium packages available for the venue that's actually going to add led headlights led tail lights and led daytime running lights so led is really all around with the premium package if you wanted to go that option did want to also mention the lighting position here and so the headlights are actually the bottom set of lighting and the top part is the daytime running lights so headlights including low beam and high beam are going to be on the bottom in case you were curious about the lighting setup there but in the middle taking a look at the front grille it's actually going to differ slightly depending upon the trim level you will have this black mesh looking design if you go with the se however the sel is going to give you more of a uh, silver accenting let's say definitely looks a lot better in my opinion on the sel than the se that we have here today but either way i do want to mention that a little slight difference in the front grill depending upon the trim level but overall in the front i gotta admit the uh the venue here looks a lot like maybe a smaller version of the santa fe which is a good thing santa fe is a good looking suv so anyways let's go ahead and make our way to the side first thing i wanted to mention is roof rails we do not have today they will come standard on the sel trim level and up if you wanted to go that route another cool thing i found here is the uh side turn signal marker here this is actually a turn signal light found on the front fender there so you don't see that too often i thought that was pretty cool but a lot of times you will see them on the side mirrors instead of the front fender but anywho now that we're on the side mirrors let's go ahead and take a look at them body colored power adjustable side mirrors will come standard for every single trim level they will be heated if you were to go with the premium package another available option for you there taking a step back a little bit i want to show you guys body colored door handle standard for all trim levels it's one of those things where on lesser priced vehicles a lot of times you will get those black plastic door handles so it is kind of cool that they do have body color door handles for all trims on the venue but taking a look down at the wheel setup here 15 inch steel wheels with covers are going to come standard on the se here that we have today that's what you're looking at of course right now however if you were to jump up to the sel you're going to get 15 inch aluminum alloy wheels and of course with the premium package once again this kind of the cool styling package i guess you could say with some leds and some exterior upgrades but that is going to give you 17 inch alloy wheels if you were to go that route then going ahead and making our way to the back you will find a shark fin antenna up top there integrated rear spoiler also standard just below that rear window wiper again all of that for every single trim level one of the coolest things is the venue lettering that is actually going to come standard on all trim levels and honestly it's not really that big of a deal but i do like that it's spelled out horizontally there kind of gives you that more upscale appearance in my opinion but led tail lights again with the premium package like i just mentioned so it is a cool design i like the uh horizontal lines that go through the interior of the tail light there so pretty cool design there but then just below it all though it might be kind of difficult to see there is a single exhaust tucked away up underneath there so you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip So now since we are around back to so go ahead and open that rear lift gate simply just lift up underneath there That is how you're gonna get that thing open But once opened up cargo capacity is gonna come in at 18.7 cubic feet If that was not enough space for you, there is a 60 40 split bumping the cubic feetness up to 31.9 cubic feet and elaborating a little bit in that cargo area There is some in-floor storage as well as a spare tire located just underneath that trunk floor at least for the SE SEL is actually gonna give you a dual level cargo floor so a little extra space if you were to go with that sel trim level but either way you also have a cargo area cover back there which is always helpful with hatchbacks or small suvs kind of hides what is in that back area so people aren't tempted to break into it so that's a good thing also a grocery hook back there as well so that's always handy but make your way to the rear seats rear legroom comes in at 34.3 inches so for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there 
So it's not the most space back there. I still was able to fit though. Perhaps with this one, a little room for improvement for Hyundai here is instead of making the back part of the front seats plastic so that the rear passenger's knees are pushing up against plastic, kind of make that the same material as the seat. So maybe their knees can push into the front seat a little bit, making it a little less uncomfortable in the back seat. But that's my little constructive criticism back there. No rear ventilation back there. Honestly, you don't need it. The venue is a smaller vehicle, so the air is gonna circulate just fine throughout it. So no issues there, but making our way to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating will come with the SE. You will find heated front seats if you went with the premium package. And overall, they're pretty comfy, honestly. I've had no issues with seat comfort or anything like that. So it's pretty much as expected there. Tilt and telescoping steering wheel will come standard for every single trim level. And it will come with a urethane finish there. And then make your way to the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Hyundai logo on the one side and when you flip it over, lock and unlock. So pretty basic key there. I did want to mention though, there is a convenience package here I wanted to mention because that convenience package actually does give you a push button start if you're used to that. So that is definitely something you might want to consider. By the way, that convenience package does also add a power sunroof, a sliding armrest with a storage box, a leather wrap steering wheel and shift knob and blind spot warning and rear cross traffic alert. And I'll get more to the safety later, but that convenience package goes for $1,150 if you were interested there. But so anyways, to go ahead and start this one, all I am going to do is simply just put my foot on the brake and turn the key. And so once started up, as far as the gauges go, tachometer is on your left, speedometer is on your right. There is a small digital display front and center, which actually can be adjusted by using the steering wheel mounted controls on the right side there, giving you things like your trip A, trip B, average miles per gallon. There's also a digital speedometer that can be displayed up there as well. Also tire pressure information when you need your next oil change. And there's a couple other things as well. So that's pretty nice. Make your way to overall interior quality. Again, there is an available power sunroof with that convenience package. We of course don't have it today though, unfortunately. Overall, it is more of a simplistic setup here on the interior. One of the cool things I do like is just above the passenger side glove box here, there is a little storage area, although the bottom is plastic as opposed to a rubberized bottom, so things might slide around a little bit there, but it is cool that it's there though. Just in front of the shifter, you do have a little more storage area there as well, including a 12 volt power outlet and a USB charging port. Just behind the shifter, more storage once again, two cup holders and a little more storage behind the cup holders as well. And again, you can get that with a center armrest if you were to go with the convenience package, but that is not of course what we have today. So that is why that is there. And that's what you're looking at right now. But again, a very simplistic design. Everything is super easy to use because of that, like the climate control options in front of the shifter there. Certainly not gonna have any issues with learning how to use that. But one of the coolest parts about the Hyundai Venue is the infotainment screen. Eight inch color touchscreen display will come standard on all trim levels, including Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Therefore, if you hook your smartphone up to the Venue, you have free navigation in the bottom trim level, the SE of the Hyundai Venue. That is pretty cool. Factory navigation system is available, of course, but who really needs it with Android Auto, Apple CarPlay anyways? Can of course check out your radio settings up there as well. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system, you will get a four speaker sound system with the SE trim level that we have today. If you were to jump up to the SEL trim level or the denim trim level, you're gonna get a six speaker sound system. However, since we do have that four speaker sound system today, let's go ahead and turn on the radio. See, we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one. I don't know what that was, but percussion in the morning, nothing better than percussion. <laughs> Sound system is pretty much as expected, you guys. It's four speakers, it does the trick. Certainly nothing that's gonna blow your mind, but it is a four speaker sound system and we'll leave it at that. But last thing I wanted to mention on that tech display is when you do put the venue in reverse, every single trim level will give you a rear view camera letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so here is the part where the venue actually really shines because standard safety features actually is quite a bit. Of course, front side, side curtain airbags, driver's knee airbag, that is pretty cool. And the knee airbags don't always come standard on every vehicle out there. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, also rear child door locks, but here's where it gets good. Standard for all trim levels on the venue, forward collision avoidance assist with pedestrian detection, which actually uses a front facing camera to help detect 
detect and avoid a collision. There's also that lane keep assist feature I kept mentioning to you guys, which steers the car back into the lane if it senses unintentional drifting. That system works very, very well in the venue. So if you're the type of person to be distracted easily, this is definitely a solid pick for you. And the last standard safety feature that comes with the venue is driver attention warning, which essentially warns the driver if the car starts to detect fatigue. So that is definitely a plus as well. And like I was mentioning with the convenience package and some other package options, there is a blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert available if you wanted it. And so, but that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new cars because we do new car reviews on this channel, of course. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold. Let's go.